Well, here it is, Saturday night. What is that song? Saturday night, is it the loneliest night of the week? No, no, that can't be it. However, I went out this afternoon, gonna run to Kroger and stock up on my Dr. Peppers. I don't let my Dr. Peppers get too low. It's just like an alcoholic, you know. Gotta have that Dr. Pepper. Isn't that a shame? Um, never did learn to drink water. Never did learn to drink milk. I was the cockeyed one in the family that didn't do anything according to the rules. So anyway, I get in the car and you know, it's got all those buttons and things and little click this, click that, click something else and reset. I don't know what all those things mean. And I was always used to turn in a key, you know. You know how you used to put a key in the ignition and turn it and your car started? Well, they're not made that way anymore. You all know that better than I do. Uh, you push a button. Step on the brake, push the button, the car starts. It didn't start. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> what am I gonna do, Jan's in South Carolina? Not that she's a mechanic or anything, but you know how it is. When I have a problem, she's the first one I call and say, what do I do? Well, she figured, she said, oh, you probably didn't turn it off and it sat there and idled all night, not all night, for two or three days. And it probably ran all the gas out. I said, no, I don't think so. So she had bought me um, AAA. So I called AAA. It'd be right over. Whew, what a relief that was. In 30 minutes, they were here. He goes out, <clears throat> I said, now my daughter says she doesn't think it's the battery. He got his little box thing out, you know, they've got the equipment right there to check it out. You don't have to use those big old long plugs that could cause you to get electrocuted. They don't use those anymore. You know what I'm talking about. This is girl language, not mechanic language. So, I said, well, my daughter said she didn't think it was the battery. And he got through checking and he says, well, you can tell your daughter she's wrong. It was my battery, had to have a new battery. Well, my mechanic, not at the garage today. What am I gonna do? I don't want to wait till Monday to call him. So the young man, he's a very nice young man, very helpful. He started explaining all these little buttons and things that you push. Think I said, you, you mean I've got that? You mean I can do that? Well, he was getting the kick out of me, I think. Anyway, uh, he said, well, I happen to have a battery in the truck with me. Now, of course, you could expect that. I'm sure they always carry an extra battery because most of the time, I'd say, when they get there, yeah, it's your battery. So they're prepared. I said, oh, well, I don't know. Do I wait till Monday and go to my mechanics? I don't want to wait till Monday before I can use my car put the battery in, so he did. And I could tell the difference, really, I could tell the difference. I went to the grocery, got my Dr. Pepper and a few other things, came home, fixed my supper, which was mostly leftovers from last night. But you know what? I had fried potatoes last night for the first time in years. I didn't realize how good those potatoes tasted. But you know what else? They're so fattening and greasy. 
I can't get in the habit of eating those every few nights. I've got to forget it. Anyway, I finished my supper, which, as I said, was leftovers, but sometimes leftovers are better than the first time you eat them. Now, I'm working. Oh, doggone. Let me get my... I've got two iPads here. One of them I'm going to read from. Yeah, here we go. I wanted to get it, have it ready. Yeah, let me get me that down to where I want to start. And uh, I'll get back with you. Oh, let's see. Yep. Okay. I'm going to talk about family reunions. How many of you have family reunions nowadays? I think for one reason, the families are much smaller, but they live so far apart. You've got a child in California, you've got one in Chicago, one in South Carolina, maybe one in Florida. Who knows? In most cases, you might not have any living in the same town with you. That's the way life is today. You're not going to have the big families anymore. Now I'm going to read to you about family reunions. I'm just taking a portion of this story. <clears throat> I'm reading it because I don't think I put this one in one of my books. I looked, I couldn't find it, but it might be there anyway under a different title. So I'm going to read to you, and some, I know some of you wanted me to read stories, so hopefully this will be one that is not in my book. So I'm going to kind of nitpick at what I read to you. Family reunions. Various locations and cousins' homes were chosen each year for the annual reunion, sometimes even Cumberland Gap National Park. By the time I was married and my children were 10 and 12 years old, the gatherings had increased in size. We were at my cousin Curtis's house in Ewing, Virginia, when a cousin from Jonesville, Virginia, offered his home for the next reunion. None of my family had ever been to his house. As I recall, I believe he had two sons and a daughter named Sue. That year, I was living in Tennessee. I attended the reunion with my sister, Bella May, and her husband. My children went with me, Jan and Greg. We had heard all kinds of rumors about Cousin Harry's house, sitting right on top of a mountain. Wait a minute. Yes. They said, you can't miss it. You can see it from anywhere at the bottom of the mountain. It has huge white columns across the front of the house, large swimming pool, and their garage will hold seven cars. That sounded uh, like a southern plantation to me, bigger than any house I had ever seen. Now, who wouldn't want to attend that reunion? Nobody in our families lived like that. We were very anxious to see, uh, to get to the reunion. We followed the winding road and sure enough, Sitting at the top of that mountain was Cousin Harry's big house with its huge white columns. Somebody didn't exaggerate that time. Cousin Harry was a well-known federal judge in the state of Virginia. My brother-in-law drove the car up and around to the back of the house where there was about an acre of flat land for parking. <clears throat> A little frog in my throat. 
Sitting to one side was Cousin Curtis's big tractor trailer truck, and to beat it all, the back of his truck was filled with watermelons and cantaloupes. He had just returned from Florida and also brought a load of sweet corn for the reunion. Off to one side of the yard was a huge iron kettle. Now, you know the kind I'm talking about. Those great big black kettles, great big black kettles that you put out on open fire. They came from the pioneer days. That's the size, huge. Well, like they used in pioneer days with a fire built under it. Okay, the kettle was filled with several dozen ears of corn in the process of bo boiling. Now, of course, you know all this corn had been shucked and silks off of it. Someone was definitely planning for a big family reunion that year. In fact, 125 members attended cousins, aunts, and uncles. The pastor of somebody's church was usually invited. The crowd was beginning to gather rapidly. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, um, cut something off here. Well, I may, I, I cut out something, a little something. Okay, I'll go on. My next move at the reunion was when I spotted a fairly short young man waving his arm to and fro, giving parking direction to cars as they arrived. I could tell he was from the Philippines by his accent and physical appearance. Something about him looked very familiar, and I just couldn't place it. I walked up to him and noticed his name. Tag said, Ignatius, right up here on his shirt. Hmm, that name seemed familiar to me. Where had I heard the name before? I stopped in front of him and said, do people sometimes call you Iggy? He said, yes. And I said, is your name Ignatius Cruz? Yes, again. I know you from somewhere, but I can't think where it is. He then said I look familiar to him also. I asked if he was married. Yes, he was. His wife's name was Sue. Oh my goodness, I know that name too. By chance, Sue happened to be the name of Cousin Harry's daughter. She was Iggy's wife. But that wasn't the connection I was making. I wasn't going to be satisfied until I learned where the two of us had known each other. Since I lived in Lexington, I asked if he had ever been to Lexington. Yes, he'd gone to school at the University of Kentucky in the early 60s. No, that couldn't be our connection because I was living in Louisville, Kentucky in those days. Okay, how about Louisville? Iggy identified a time he was working in Louisville, but I could make no connection. I kept probing him for background information. We'd been friends at least 10 years earlier, but neither of us could pinpoint the situation when suddenly it struck me like an acorn falling on my head. <clears throat> I said, Victory Memorial Baptist Church. I suddenly realized Sue and I were in the same Sunday school class, and you played on the local softball team with my husband. Iggy's eyes brightened, and we got so excited to think I had been in the same Sunday school class with the couple and never knew I was socializing with my own cousin during those years. I said, Iggy, 
I can't wait to tell my mother. She will be so surprised to hear that we know each other. I left him alone to finish directing cars to parking spaces and then went to tell the story to Mama. That was probably the best and biggest family reunion I ever attended. <clears throat> it was true, my cousin's garage was big enough for seven cars. Tables were positioned all around a huge pool table, covered with a variety of vegetable and meat dishes spread from one end to the other. It was a splendid display of home-cooked food. Ears of steaming corn were dumped out of a wet pillowcase onto huge platters. There was enough food for a large banquet. Now, there where I said that they boiled the corn in that huge black uh, pot out over the open fire, but they had put all of the ears of corn in pillowcases so that when the corn was finished boiling, they just took the handle of the pillowcase and pulled all of that corn out of the pot. Simplest thing in the world, because I could see me trying to scoop out one ear of corn at a time. But we had 125 people there, and there's gonna be a lot of scooping. Pillowcase filled with corn, that did the trick. That's an idea for you whenever you have one of those big gatherings and you're boiling corn over a big pot. Okay, I never saw Iggy or Sue again, and they happened to live in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia at the time. Cousin Harry's family never attended another reunion. A few years later, my 15-year-old nephew had to testify in a trial where one of his friends was killed in an auto accident. <clears throat> the judge presiding asked, do you know who I am? My nephew said, no, sir. Next, the judge said, have we ever met before? Again, no. Not that I know of. The presiding judge for the trial was Cousin Harry. Now, that's all I'm going to tell you about the family reunions. But I have not attended one since my mother died in 1998. Family reunions were very important in those days. And it was during those years that I started working on genealogy. I wanted to record my family history. Now, just the other day on um, email, email comes through and they will tell you things coming from the genealogy website. They will say, so-and-so, birthday, such and such, he is, 101 years old. Well, that's for people who keep up with things like that. It's nice to know that sometimes you'll recognize a name. So this week, there's a name comes up. It says, Thelma Rowlett Carter is 108 years old. I looked at that name and I said, Something about that name is familiar. See, my mother was a Rowlett, and it was spelled the same way. And then the name Carter, I know. When I was working on genealogy back in the 1990s, I was uh, corresponding with a lady in Washington State her last name was Carter. She had married a Carter. She was a Rowlett. 
and I got to thinking, I believe this is that lady's mother. It must be her mother who has just turned 108 years old. And it's just been a month or two ago, I saw another name, Rowlett. I recognized that name. I knew who he was. I'd been to several family reunions with him. He was from Kingsport, Tennessee. He was celebrating his 107th birthday. What does that tell you? My mama was a rally. She lived to be 101. What does that say for me? I've got longevity in my family. Good genes. So, and I've had a doctor even tell me, you'll live to be 103. And I looked at him like I, he thought I was going to throw daggers at him. He said, why are you upset over being 103? And I looked at him and I said, who wants to be 103? Well, he just laughed. But anyway, I thought I'd tell you the little family history story because there were the cousins there for years, the closest cousins, the ones we grew up with. You know those that sometimes they're like your best friends, sometimes they're like the kids next door, and then when they come to visit, you all lay on pallets in the floor when you go to sleep at night because there aren't enough beds in the house for everybody, so the kids take the floor. And you remember those days, those are days you never forget because they meant something to you. And I hate to say that families have gotten away from that now. I miss it, miss it very much, because that's how you kept in contact with your family. The families have decreased and decreased and decreased. There aren't enough to have a family reunion. I hope that changes in the next few years. I hope families begin to realize the importance of, of the connection to your own biological families. So, that's my story for tonight. Now, you're going to have to keep in mind, I'm getting close to 150 stories that I've done in the last year and a half. I'm going to run out of stories soon. So I may have to spread them a little farther apart. And in a way, I hate to do that because I'm afraid I might lose some of my viewers if I don't keep track going steady. But I hope you'll always be there watching for some little tidbit of something that I have to tell you. Like dead battery today. Yeah, well, to some people that might be interesting. But to you, it's just letting you know, yeah, I live like everybody else. And I have to call on others for help. So... Jan was kind of pleased that I got the AAA man to come and help with my car. And that kept her from having to come and take care of my troubles. Yep, we're still working on a trip. We're going to take that trip sometime soon. And I may be calling on some of you for information, travel information, because we aren't sure yet what direction we're going to go, and we may need some advice on the best places to visit. 
I hope you've had your supper. I'm going to look and see if there's a good old movie on now. So you get back with me. Let me know what you think. I look forward to hearing from you.